Hello listeners and welcome to the second module of the British Constitution. Today we are going to deal with the salient features of English Constitution. I am Ranjit Kaur, Assistant Professor Political Science from the Department of Humanities at the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. So let us begin. Talking about the first feature of British Constitution is it is mostly unwritten and partially written. There's no such document which could be produced and can be said that this is the Constitution of Britain, that we can do it for India and also for other countries. But in England, there are very few provisions as we discussed in the last module, like statutes, like charters, judicial decisions, and some of the eminent works could be presented in the form of a written document. Otherwise, there's no such single document which, be, which can be considered as the constitution of Britain. Second feature of the England constitution is, it is evolutionary. The constitution of England is considered to be evolving, that means growing. There are two different sets of constitution, enacted or evolved. When we talk about Indian constitution, it is an enacted constitution. Why? Because there was a constituent assembly which was being constituted specially to draft the constitution. Whereas in England, there was no such assembly which have debated, discussed or given time to frame the constitution of Britain. So it is a child of wisdom. So, it is a child of wisdom. It is growing like an organism and still there is a scope for growth. The third feature is its flexibility. It is the flexible constitution and it is considered to be the most flexible constitution in the world. Whereas the constitution of US is considered to be the most rigid constitution. The reason behind is the constitution of Britain is unwritten and there is no difference between the ordinary law and the constitutional law. The ordinary and the general law are being passed, amended in the same manner. And that is why any amendment could be done with 50% of members present and voting. So that is, it has been known as the most flexible and it is adapted according to the changes. The next feature is its unitary character. There are two different kinds of constitution, unitary or federal. Now this is the structure. If we talk about federal structure, India, US, where the powers are being divided, among the center, state and the local bodies, especially in India, we have local bodies too. So we have a three tier system. The powers are concentrated at London. They have one legislature, which is common for England, Wales, Scotland, etc. All the powers are being delegated from one legislature to the local authorities. So they do not have powers with the units, only the center possess the power. That is why they have a unitary form of government. Coming up to the next feature, that is gap between theory and practice. What is this gap? Theoretically, if we look at the powers of the crown, you'll feel that the king or the queen of Britain is more powerful. They have the rights to choose the prime minister, they have the power to select the cabinet. The King of England is the chief commander of all the three wings. He signed treaties and agreements. Here he or she has the power to declare war and peace. But practically all these powers are exercised by the Prime Minister and his colleagues. The King has to seek advice before taking any decision. That is why there is a gap between theory and practice. It seems to be like an absolute monarchy, but practically it is constitutional monarchy. The next feature is the blend of monarchy, aristocracy and democracy. 
monarchy is a different kind of government aristocracy again is a different kind of government democracy also is a different form of government but all these combinations could be viewed in britain they have monarchy where the king is hereditarily elected whereas the upper house house of lords represent aristocracy the members of house of lords are from the royal blood as well as the noblers the third one democracy which has been represented in the house of commons the members of the house of commons are directly elected by the people so there is a blend of monarchy aristocracy and democracy next feature talks about separation of powers combined with concentration of responsibility the french philosopher montesquieu has given this theory of separation of powers when he came to england he observed that there are three different organs in england they are executive legislature and judiciary and all these three organs of the government work independently without interfering each other the executive which consists of the crown prime minister and the cabinet whereas the parliament which consists of two houses upper and the lower house of lords house of commons and the judiciary which comprises of courts but practically they also have concentration of responsibility that talks about that executive is responsible to the legislature whereas even the judiciary has to look after that they follow the laws of the england next feature is rule of law now what is rule of law it implies equality of law as we have in article 14 in indian constitution equality before law the security of the rights of british citizens are being secured in rule of law though there is no article defining the security of their rights their privileges but this is something which guarantees them rule of law has three implications first it talks about all persons are equal before law irrespective of their position and rank so there is no privilege class no rich and poor whatever profession you have all are equal before law secondly it talks about the doctrine if emphasize the supremacy of law and not of the individuals law is supreme no person is supreme so again irrespective of the position the law is supreme the person or the individual is not supreme thirdly which shows the essence of habeas corpus like no one can be detained or imprisoned without a fair and proper trial by the competent court of law as we have it in india no one can be detained for more than 24 hours unless and until he is been proved guilty similarly nor can a person be punished or deprived of his life liberty or property except for the specific breach of law breach of law proved in any ordinary court of law coming up to the next feature its parliamentary form of government when we talk about parliamentary form of government there are presidential government also which you could see in us but the parliamentary government talks about that the real head is the prime minister not the crown so in parliamentary structure they are been directly elected by the people lower house house of commons the members of house of commons are directly elected by the people so there is a parliamentary structure and the executive is nominal by nature next one is the sovereignty of parliament when we talk about parliament in england is supreme that means really they are supreme they have unlimited powers 
It has been said that parliament can make or unmake any laws. Even if they want that the king should not get married to the women of his choice, they can make that law also. Some of the critiques have also pointed out that the only thing what they cannot do is to make a man a woman, a woman a man. But some of the critiques says they can do so. Okay, so that is the sovereignty of the parliament, the supremacy of the parliament where any laws could be framed by them. And there is no legal authority which can challenge the legality of the acts which are being passed by the parliament. Last one is the bicameral legislature. The legislature of Britain consists of two houses. It's bicameral, so two houses. The upper house, as already said, is House of Lords and the lower one is the House of Commons. The members of the upper house are being nominated, whereas the members of the lower house are being directly elected. This is the entire feature of the British Constitution. Hope you would have liked the video. Thank you so much for listening.